From the very beginning of time, the planet Earth was not a silent place. And as it was increasingly populated by living beings, these quickly learned that sounds constitute an excellent means of communication. In the dense jungles where virtually no light penetrates, almost all the survivors have developed their sense of hearing in order to know whether or not they are alone. But beyond a simple call, many species invented true languages capable of transmitting information across enormous distances. All communications by sound imply the existence of a message and at least two participants, one who emits it and another who hears it. When both are of the same species, it is assumed that they will gain some positive benefit from this acoustic signal. But problems may arise when enemies intercept sounds which are not meant for them and learn to use them against those producing them. There is a universal code among animal species by means of which all innately recognize when a call is a threat. When it is an expression of desperation or when it signifies true fear. But without a doubt, the pinnacle of progress in communication through sounds is human language. A combination of pre-established tones capable of transmitting complex messages and sensations. Still, despite the existence of language, the different human cultures have continued to use a multitude of sounds to complement these messages. From simple cries of greeting like these in Papua, to the development of music and dance, both of which have much in common with the songs and dances of many animals. All these sounds express something, all speak of love, identity, memory or promise. human culture has its own sounds, its instruments and its echoes. Rhythms which express everything from contact with the spirits to a simple invitation to join in the celebrations. We are going to break the silence. African elephants emit a wide range of vocalizations to communicate with each other, but one type is particularly interesting. The very low frequency or infrasonic calls which the human ear cannot perceive. These infrasonic signals have a longer wavelength than high frequency sounds and so are not affected by obstacles such as leaves or grass. They are therefore ideal for communication over long distances. On the savanna or in the jungle, elephants can hear a bellow or loud trumpeting only up to a few hundred meters away, while an infrasonic sound is audible to another elephant at a distance of several kilometers. These calls are very useful when the female comes into heat, given that this only happens for three days every four years. As the males and females live apart from each other, often kilometers away, the bulls hear the call and have just enough time to reach the female before it is too late.
In Africa, the groups of humans also quickly discovered an efficient system for transmitting calls over long distances. The percussion of drums is capable of communicating surprisingly complex messages over many kilometers across jungle or plain alike. But it is used above all to convey a message or important announcement which all the members of the group must hear no matter how far away they are. Wars, weddings or meetings, no one can claim that they weren't informed if the message is sent by TomTom. -tom. The system of percussion is also used on the island of New Guinea and in many others in Indonesia. Rhythm and cadence inform that an important initiation ceremony is about to take place and must be attended by representatives of neighboring villages. To now, we have seen sound systems which convey information between members of the same species. But around the planet, there are cases of very different animals who have reached curious biological packs in their calls, especially those of alert. One such example is to be found here in India. The chital is a type of deer which lives in this region and which likes to graze alongside curious simian companions, the langurs. The reason for this is that the langurs have organized a very efficient system of surveillance based on lookouts posted up in the treetops who are in permanent visual contact with each other. The langurs have very good sight, but when they come down to the ground in order to complement their diet, they lose the advantage of perspective and become vulnerable. Therefore, with the reassurance of the sense of smell and the hearing of the chitals, they feel safer. Both species need to be constantly on their guard because they share their forest with the greatest assassin in Asia and both of them form part of his usual menu. The Indian tiger can reach up to 260 kilograms in weight, and so despite their cryptic markings, it is difficult for them to go unnoticed when they move, above all if there are sentries in virtually every tree in the area. When a langur spots the tiger, it sounds the alarm. Immediately, all the other monkeys act as repeaters and the Chitals receive the message, there's a tiger in the vicinity. The Chitals then use their sign language, their tails and ears become erect and they bang their feet on the ground. But knowing there's a tiger around is not enough. They also need to know where, exactly where, because a mistake would mean heading towards the danger. The Lankers leave the ground and the direction in which they do so tells the Chitals which way they should run. In reality, only one Langur has seen the tiger, and it is therefore vital to avoid fleeing in panic, which might well take them directly to the hunter. Just a few hundred meters are enough to prevent a possible surprise attack, and soon calm will return to the herds. This association between langurs and chitals, along with other factors, means that the tiger only kills once in every 20 attempts and often forces the great hunter to travel over 20 kilometers in search of prey. On the 
other side of the world lives an animal whose screams also help it survive. The Tasmanian devil is a carnivorous marsupial who loves eating carrion. It is not a very large animal and nonetheless it has a very bad reputation. Even its name would be an exaggeration if it were not for the noise it makes. The first Europeans to arrive in Australia heard terrifying grunts in the dark of night and thought they were produced by a terribly extraordinary animal, a devil, hence the name. The fact is, the Tasmanian devil has a very bad temper and when two of them meet over a dead body, they settle their differences by screaming at each other. These exaggerated snorts serve to avoid real fights between rivals who could seriously harm each other with their powerful fangs. In reality, they do not even touch. The one that screams loudest will win the fight, and both would escape without even a scratch. If the devils really attacked each other in these clashes, they would inflict numerous wounds, and even the winner might well die from a subsequent infection. Therefore, natural selection has favoured screams as a survival factor above real physical aggression. lies the Ladakh Valley, called Little Tibet, as it is the home of Tibetan spirituality and culture in exile. At the monastery of Lama Yuru, the annual festival of dances called Cham is about to begin. The dances that are about to begin represent the fear of demons. The dancing monks will capture the malignant spirits with a bowl they carry in their left hand. Each sound and movement has its meaning in favor of the protective gods who work against these evil spirits. The origin of the dance is the Bon Chos, an animist religion which existed before Buddhism and which has left this legacy which the monks incorporate as a metaphor of the gradual conquest of the ego, the final aim of Buddhism. The use of sounds as vehicles to elevate the human soul and bring it closer to the divinity is a constant in all the cultures of our planet. The chants help achieve another level of consciousness, evoke the other world and seem to bring closer the distant murmur of the souls of the dead. Sounds which we hear from when we are children and which form part of the collective memories of peoples. In 
village in the north of Laos, the dancers are to ask for a good rice harvest and a short dry season. In reality, no one knows exactly why we humans relate music to ritual and ceremonial concepts, but it is without a doubt a transcultural phenomenon. In Rio de Janeiro, the Macumba ceremonies, a mixture of ancestral African rites and Christianity, are an extreme example in which participants go into a trance amidst an atmosphere saturated with sounds, without which the act could not take place. The rhythm gradually takes over the participants until one of them connects with the spirits and is possessed by them. The fact is, sounds unite the members of a community, be it religious or of birds. And though at first sight there would appear to be no relation, in both cases the acoustic link is an expression of union, of group identity. For the sulfur crested cockatoos, as with almost all social birds, the constant chattering maintains cohesion among the flock. It means I am here and is vital for them. In these large groups, each individual sends out his contact call approximately once a minute, and they're all capable of recognizing the voice of each other. Birds in general have good hearing, and therefore it is logical that they also have developed their vocal faculties and use them on many different occasions. One of the most frequent is the sexual call. Here on the coasts of Ecuador, these blue-footed boobies emit their characteristic whistles when the breeding season begins. But it is in southern Spain that we find a species for which sound is a question of life and death. Since before dawn, adult flamingos have been arriving at this lagoon in Andalusia. They have spent almost the whole night flying, having traveled 300 kilometers to get food for their children. But when they arrive, the problems begin because each adult must find his own chick in the middle of a starving, clamoring horde of young flamingos. How do they do it? They simply recognize the sound of its voice and are capable of distinguishing the cries of their child from all others, even though there are thousands of them. For a chick, it's no problem being fed by someone who is not his father. But for an adult, it would be a disaster to feed someone else's chick while your own dies of hunger. So it's impossible to deceive the adults despite the fact that the chicks ask all of them regardless. They go around the colony in search of the special tone of voice of their child. Some chicks are incredibly insistent, demanding food from any adult that comes near, persecuting and harassing them, at times even forcing them to resort to violence. But the determined parent will not give even a morsel of the food in its pouch to any chick but its own. In the dense, dark interior of the rainforests of South America, sight is not much use. Except for the rivers, the rest of the landscape is an impenetrable tangle of leaves and branches. Here we find one of the animals that has most adapted its body to serve its voice, the howler monkey. 
The Hala monkeys live in groups of between 10 and 30 individuals who virtually never go down to the ground. They maintain absolute peace within their groups, do not fight for the right to copulate or to dominate the others, but they do feel the overriding need to defend their territory from incursions by other groups of Hala monkeys. As the jungle is a three-dimensional space, marking with smell is very complicated, and they therefore demarcate their territory by means of cries. At the presence of an enemy, they will also raise the alarm, filling the jungle with a chorus of their raucous voices. For a jaguar trying to hunt, this ruckus is very annoying. It will be impossible for him to catch anything here. The noises emitted by the Hala monkeys are the basis of their Pacific society. Their symbolic discussions avoid direct contact both with their enemies and with other groups of their own species. Another means by which sounds contribute to dissipating tensions is frequently practiced in human societies, like shows or spectacles. Entertaining means making people forget their problems for a while. It is known that since human beings have existed, there have always been comics, people whose mission is to amuse and divert others. In the complexity of the human brain, these entertainments are of vital importance. It has been proven that in extreme conditions such as prisons or wars, a simple spectacle completely changes people's attitude to life. These girls from the Ivory Coast have been trained for an exercise called Jongla. They travel from village to village, giving exhibitions in which it is supposed they are possessed by a spirit which protects them as they perform dangerous gymnastics. The people are anxiously awaiting the start of the show. The key components are the child and an extremely sharp spear which are brought dangerously, spectacularly close to each other. When they are eight years old, the children will be returned to their homes with part of the money earned. As with almost everything, human beings have once again transcended the biological meaning of sounds to incorporate them into a higher dimension, which we call music. Music is one of the greatest achievements of humanity, a true universal language capable of transmitting and inspiring profound emotions. Isolated in the middle of the frozen steppe of Kazakhstan, these nomadic herders are finishing their meal of lamb. Once they have eaten, they will enjoy the very best of the sounds of the earth. <laughs> Mandai, Alma Moyan Kirashas, Men 